Hello my friends, welcome to Pro Arm Strings. I'm Henriette and I would like to wish you a warm welcome to this new course Tonalisation on the Violin. And in this first lesson today, let's start by thinking what tonalisation actually is. What does it mean to improve your tone quality? First of all, it means we need to start to think about the sound that we make. How often have we played a tune and not thought about the tone quality at all? So when we're practicing tonalization, it is practicing the violin with a view to enhancing the sound that we make, enhancing the quality of the tone and finding out what you like in quality of tone and what is a good tone. And we want to first find out what the violin can do and how we can stop interfering with it before we can then start to develop the sort of tone quality that we like. And in practicing tonalization frequently, you will find that you're going to go on a journey of exploration. Exploration of your instrument, exploration of your bow, and exploration of yourself. What do I like in a tone? What is for me the most beautiful sound? And how does it work in the space where I play? And how does it work when I play with other people? So it's all these different considerations that we're going to be thinking of. You may have heard about the term tone colours. And later on in this course, we're going to be thinking about what actually are tone colours and how can we change the tone so that they start to project certain ideas, certain atmospheres. Um, so that is what comes a little bit later. But let's first, in this lesson today, think about our starting point and how we can start first to listen to a good sound and then how we can make a good sound and set ourselves up correctly for good tonalization practice. Anything in violin technique to do with the bow requires a good and relaxed bow hold. So for a moment I'm going to put my violin down and I want you to join in perhaps with me going over our bow hold and just checking that the bow hold that we have is the optimum bow hold to allow us to work on our tonalization. So I'm going to start with a little ring between my thumb and my middle finger and you can see that my thumb is bent and that it is touching the middle finger in the middle. So in the middle joint of my middle finger. I'm opening a little gap there and I'm placing my thumb in this little wooden bit between the frog and this little protective sleeve. So my thumb is going to go there. I know for many of you, this corner here in the frog cries out for your thumb, but I want you to check right now, and that is why we're going back to basics, is that your thumb is not in this corner here, but it's actually on the stick and on that little wooden part there. Once you've got your thumb in the right place, pop your middle finger over and then drop your other fingers down so that you've got a finger width space between your index finger and your middle finger. And then you've got your middle and ring fingers together and then you've got about a finger width space again between your ring finger and your pinky. Your pinky is bent and it's on the edge of the bow. Now most bows have got edges right here and that is done on purpose so that you can see that your little finger, your pinky, is leaning from the side against the angle that is coming towards you. So it's not on the top here, but on the side. So when you look at it from that end, you can clearly see that my pinky is not on the top, but it's more at an angle. Now, of course, having a good bow hold is helpful for tonalization because it allows you to do all kinds of things with your bow. And in the course of this series of lessons, we'll come to think about that more. But what I'd like you to think about today is that you hold the bow with as little squeezing as you possibly can. So let's deliberately squeeze really, really hard. And now if you let go of that squeezing, you should have that sort of light feeling in your bow. And you might well hold your bow with your left hand just to feel that lightness and you can perhaps see that I am sort of balancing the bow between my fingers but I'm not squeezing at all 
and if you have someone in your house that can help you pull the bow out of your fingers and you can see it can just disappear I'm not holding it it's just balancing remember that your bow is always leaning on the string so you don't actually need to grip it at all and this is perhaps one of the basic exercises of tonalization is to hold the bow with as little squeezing as you possibly can. Now eventually in the course of these lessons we might try to squeeze a little bit more and you might find in other courses that I have put on this channel I'm deliberately requesting you to squeeze the bow. For the purpose of this course I'd like you to start with as soft a bow hold as you can. Now let's put the bow to one side and let's get the violin. And what I'd like us to practice next is to start listening to the tone of your open strings. And for that purpose, we're going to pluck the open strings one by one. And you can actually just hold your violin like a guitar or like a banjo, like that. Pluck the strings one by one and listen really intently to the beginning of your plucking. And then listen to the course of this note. How long is it ringing for? So let's do that, shall we? I'm going to start plucking the G string. Can you hear it ring? Let's listen to it again. Listen to the start of this note now. How long can you still hear it ring? Let's practice that again. Did you notice that this third pluck was a little bit louder than plucks number one and two? And it kept on ringing really, really nicely. Now, if you have a, a string that you pluck and it goes dee wee 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 it might mean that your string has gone out of tune and you might need to replace it. You can hear that my G string is a fairly straight sound. It doesn't waver at all. Let's now listen to the D string when we pluck it. Again, listen to how long this note is ringing. Ah, what do you notice? Shall we listen again? Did you notice also that this D string rings for much longer than my G string used to do? Let's listen to it again. Let's pluck the A string now and let's both listen to the beginning of each string and you want to make sure you don't pluck it with your, with your nail because that gives you a very harsh sound of the A. So try to pluck your string with the fleshy part of your thumb if you do it this way and then listen to its ring. Amazing. And just focusing on what this string sounds like is a very good exercise in tonalization because I don't think you've ever listened to the strings ringing in this way before, you see. So we're starting from the very basics. What do I hear? And we're starting by listening, you see. Let's listen to the E string next. Now, if I listen really intently, I can hear my E, E, and then it goes up at the end. That means that my E string is getting a little bit old. I need to replace it very soon because it's not a straight tone. It's not a, an even sound. I'll pluck it a few more times, see if you can hear it. I'm not sure if that works on video, but you might experience a similar thing on your violin. There 
we go. I hope you heard that. Now, of course, for good tonalization and for good practicing of your hearing, you'd want to have strings that are perfectly in tune. So if you've got these wavering strings, you can also see when you, um, when you look at your strings, when you look at the G string, I'm not sure if, if I can have it this close. You can see that the string is vibrating like that and it's going in and out. And actually uh, an in-tune string should go evenly down to nothing. My G string is going out in and out a little bit. So it is time for me to replace two strings, namely my G string and my E string. The others are better. And of course, having fresh strings will help you enhance your tone quality on the violin. If you start with your material, which is not optimized, it gets really, really difficult to make the best tone that you possibly can. Now let's pick up the bow and let's practice the exercises on page seven in your book. And we have already done the plucking exercises. I'm now going to play a long note on the D string and I'm going to be in the middle between the bridge and the fingerboard. And I'm going to be fairly light. So I'm playing fairly softly on the string. Like that. However long you want to hold this note on for or how long you can hold this for is good. So what am I listening out for? First of all, I'm playing softly, so I'm fairly light, as I said, with the bow on the strings, but I want to listen to an even sound. I want to be careful that I don't get louder than softer and louder and softer again, or maybe go softer I go the other way, go louder. So that is the aim of this lesson today, is that you produce this sound which is even and very, very gentle and very, very soft. You will find that once you're doing that, you're enhancing your bowing technique, you're enhancing your listening skills and you're enhancing the feel for the instrument so let's now go on the G string, do the same thing. B light. Oh, and if you like, you can practice this a few more times. Combining this bowing technique with the pizzicato, as it says in your book. Listen to the ring. And when it's finished ringing, play the note a couple more times. That is really, really useful practice. So you can do the same thing with the longer exercises on page seven, is to make your tone really nice and even, even if you go from one finger to the next. Now, if you find yourself shaking, which might well happen during these exercises, um, there are several videos on my channel that deal with how to cure a bouncy bow, I think it's called. Um, what you want to do is try to release the tension in your right shoulder and in your upper arm and see if you can drop those down while you play. And especially since we're trying to play so softly, so with a light bow, there is a risk of that shaking. So let's work on that, shall we? Here's the exercise starting on the D string.
And now that you're starting to listen to what kind of sound comes out of your violin, I have a feeling you might discover some things already. And I have a feeling that you might hear little ruffles that you've never observed before, or little bulges in your playing, or little accents at each end of the bow stroke that you've never even heard before. And that is why this is such a useful exercise to do. So for an end of the lesson, let's practice on the G string now. Uh, and you will have noticed previously that I wasn't even counting, so I'm just playing very slow, long bows. Here we go. And... Well done, and I'm hoping that you have observed that lots of things happened while I was playing. Let me know what happened in your playing. Did you make the most beautiful sound you've ever made? Have you started to listen in a different way because of this lesson? Have you found out anything about the tone quality that you've been playing with today? Any comments gratefully received down below this video in the comments section? Creating a good quality tone does not come overnight and I'd like you to practice each of these lessons for about a week before you go on to the next one. So in the course of say four to six months you will notice a huge difference in your tone quality. Maybe not on a day-to-day -day basis quite so much because you're, you're exploring things, you're finding out things and it is that process which for me is the valuable part. So we get the bonus at the end, but in the meantime, enjoy listening to the beautiful sounds that you're making. Thank you so much for watching and for staying here right until the end. And I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Goodbye.